Godot 4 makes it so much easier than other game engines to start to code for 2D games. Here's just one of the ways that Godot 4 makes it easier. Hello everyone, today we'll make a top-down player controller for a 2D game with just a few lines of code. And since I'm currently participating in the Bullet Hell Jam 2023 game jam, I'm using a spaceship for this, but it can be used with other 2D top-down games. Why is this so easy you may ask? Well, introducing Move and Slide and Move and Collide. These are just two of the functions built into Godot 4 that does most of the heavy lifting. Now, this is a beginner tutorial slash discussion, and there are many ways to move the player with code. So, if you have a different way or approach to this, please let us know in the comments. In Godot, first let's set up some user input. We go to Project, Project Settings, Input Map, and enter a name for our first user input by clicking the Add New Actions field. Let's enter Up and click Add. We can see that a new action called Up is added in the Actions field. Now, we click the plus icon and the Event Configuration window pops up. Godot is now listening for input. We can press the W key for the Up input and the input key is registered. Now, click OK and the input is now set. We repeat this process for the other input actions. Down, left and right. With the user inputs all set, let's now move on to create the player. Click on new scene and then other node. We will use a character body 2D node to create the player. Click create and a character body 2D node is added. The yellow triangle suggests that we add a collision shape 2D to it. So let's click the plus icon to add a new node. In this window, we can see all the options that are available, and we choose Collision Shape 2D. If this option does not show up for you, you can find it by searching for the Collision Shape 2D. Click Create and the node is added to the scene. The triangle still does not go away, because we still need to add a shape. But first, let's add a Sprite 2D node to it, so that it's easier for us to adjust the size of the shape later. Click on the plus icon again to search for a Sprite 2D node. Select it and click Create to add it to the scene. I then choose the player ship right because in my method for this to work, the player sprite must be facing right. And drag it into the texture field into the inspector. We can click on the Run Current Scene button on the top right to play the current scene. The save window should pop up if you have not saved the scene already. Let's first rename the scene and click Save. My player is way too big. So with the Sprite 2D selected, I can resize it by going to Transform, Scale and setting the scale to a smaller number. Great! Now, when we play the scene, we can see that the player fits much nicer in our game view. With that done, we select the Collision Shape 2D and in the Inspector, we click on the drop-down for shape. I will choose a new Capsule Collider Shape 2D. I will need to change its rotation to fit the player. I do this by going to Transform and setting its rotation to 90 degrees. I can adjust the size by clicking on the pink dots and dragging it to the desired size. See? That was not so difficult, right? I told you that Godot 4 makes things easy. We can now add a new script to the character body 2D. But first, let's rename the character body 2D to player and click the Add New Script button. In the pop-up window, we see that the name of the script is automatically set to player. In the Templates field, we make sure that we use the Node2D default as this will ensure that the script is mostly empty when created. Then click Create and the script is added and the scene view changes to the script view. For this controller, we are going to rotate the player in the direction of the mouse and move the player using the directional input that we set up at the start of the video. We will not be discussing firing the projectile in this video. First let's handle rotating the player to face the mouse. 
we set up an export variable for rotation speed. That way we can change it in the inspector if needed. And a variable for mouse position and set that equal to vector 2. We will need to change the process delta to physics process delta and set the mouse position equal to get global mouse position. Then make a variable for target direction equal to get angle to mouse position minus position dot normalize. And to smooth the rotation, we set rotation plus equal to the sign of the target direction multiplied by rotation speed. Now it's time to move the player. We'll need two variables for this, an export variable for speed and another one for friction. Then we set the variable for direction as a vector 2 and we get the input by specifying two actions, one negative and one positive. We then normalize the direction. Now this is where the movement gets interesting. Without this, the movement can tend to feel robotic and stiff. We set the velocity equal to the loop function, which stands for linear interpolation. It takes two vectors as inputs and returns a new vector that is a weighed average between the two, based on the value of the third argument. In this case, the third argument is 0.1 which means that the return vector will be 10% of the current velocity vector and the direction multiplied by the player speed vector. This is used to create smooth and gradual movements. Next, the velocity is multiplied by 1 minus friction multiplied by delta. Here, the value 1 is simply a multiplier that doesn't change the value of velocity. The expression friction multiplied by delta represents the amount of friction that the object is experiencing, where friction is a constant value and delta is the time elapsed since the last frame. By subtracting this amount from 1, the code reduces the velocity of the object over time, simulating the effect of friction. And finally, we add move and slide. Now there's a little bit of a debate here, because we can also use move and collide in this instance. What is the difference between move and collide and move and slide? Well, they both take a vector for the movement. But move and collide, being the more basic method, is designed to calculate the collision and return the collision information. Move and slide, however, is designed to calculate a slide vector along the collision. Based on my research, my opinion is that move and slide was designed for platformers and move and collide for top-down movement. If we wish to use move and collide, we will need to pass in the velocity and reduce the speed of the player. And there you have it, a top-down player controller with smooth movement. Thanks for watching and let's continue to build and explore these worlds one pixel at a time.